Welcome back to Confluence's Van Build Adventure. I am Confluence, aka Krishan, aka Shana Balls, the third. And this is episode seven, and we're talking about the solar panel install, which I think is quite exciting. It's probably not actually that exciting, but I did it, and it, it was one of the more sort of high octane things, I guess. It, it felt quite full of pressure because. They're precious things, they were kind of expensive, and they're also kind of thin and flimsy, and there was a bit of wind, and... You know, there's a bit of, like, dr drilling holes in the van, but, you know, anyway. So I went with four flexible solar panels, 100 watts each. Uh, this was probably mostly motivated by wanting to reduce the weight of the van, and make best use of the space, and maximise my charge controller, which has a 430 watt max. So it's pretty, 400 is probably about as close as I'm likely to get. Yeah, like, I mean, the ideal I suppose would have been two 220 watt panels, but they're, it's not like a particularly normal size and they generally tend to be the bigger glass panels, which I just couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around how to deal with fixing them. I looked a little bit of roof racks. There was just no the, no good standardized information. It seems like every video I'd watched, the, the people like build their own and I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It just wasn't, it was just too difficult. I felt like with, with the light flexible panels, I can just use some form of, of adhesive to just stick them to the roof. And that was just so much easier than trying to worry about bolts and brackets and big bits of metal and roof racks and all that kind of stuff like it just just a bit out of my league um what i ended up going for is just gluing them down with the magical pseudo fix all turbo because i found like one forum thread where someone said it was all right and it you know also passed all of the tests that i'm aware of like it's outdoor waterproof weatherproof flexible and UV resistant. So as far as I can tell, it's it's good to go. And it's super strong, so I'm not gonna be worrying about it flying off. Um, it The paint will leave the metal well before the adhesive leaves the paint. And hopefully, because they're pretty lightweight, they're like just over a kilo each, I think. Um, that, I don't think that's gonna happen. I may regret this decision at some point in the future when I'm not generating enough power because flexible panels aren't that good compared to glass ones. But, I mean, in that scenario, I could potentially just put glass ones on top of the flexible panels. Not exactly great for weight, but as they don't weigh much to begin with, they, I could do it, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll see. So I found out a few days before fixing my panel that my plan for how I was going to wire it was not going to work at all. I was going to go for a series parallel, so like two in series and those two sets, well two sets of two that are in series in parallel, which, you know, if I'm talking to a fellow newbie that probably just sounds like a load of nonsense and it's quite hard to find information on about series parallel because if you search for series parallel and solo you just get a load of things explaining the difference between series and parallel and you get maybe like one or two articles that go into series parallel but none of them will give you wiring diagrams for a van and it was a bit of a mess, but I, I felt like I'd figured it out. It's not actually that hard. It's just you've got two sets of two. Each set of two is wired in series, so positive into negative. And then you've got one positive and one negative. And then the two positive and negatives you got from those two sets, you place together. So you need a, a two to one, a set of two to one connectors. Probably a set of extra cables, because the cables that came with the, ki the panels were really short, like 50 centimeters. Not really that good for anything and it would have been fine. However, I spotted on the panel that there was two different voltages listed. There was like an output voltage or an operating voltage, something like that, I think it was output voltage. And then there was a, an, a VOC, an open circuit voltage. And I kind of went, hmm, what is that? I probably should understand what that is before assuming that it doesn't matter. And so I went and read up on it and found out that it's basically like the, the maximum possible voltage that the panels would generate, that they would generate in a system where they're plugged into themselves and there's like nothing actually drawing any current. And as it happens, that is the voltage that my charge controller cares about and it has a maximum of 36 volts. It's a good job I checked that because it's rather an expensive piece of kit and it would have really sucked to fry it. Um, apparently you do 
have the ability to generate the open circuit voltage right at the beginning and end of the day when there's a very small amount of light. So yeah, and the instructions for the con for the controller for the the Votronic are very clear that it is the open circuit voltage, and I just spaced on that when I was researching this initially. So that meant that series par parallel was out of the window, and I needed to just wire them in parallel, straight parallel. This was a bit of a bummer because not only did it mean I had to buy a new set of four to one connectors, two new sets of solar cable. I also had a DC circuit breaker box that was now rated too high in terms of amps. And the cost for that and the like, the, the housing that it's going to sit in was like over £60. And it's now just totally useless to me. So that's a bummer. And I've just gone with like putting a fuse in the cable, which is not a good solution, honestly, because it's miles away from the panel. If the panels do malfunction, uh, b bad things could happen and I'm aware of that and I don't like it there might be a possibility of creating a better solution like at the other end I'm, I'm possibly going to look into that if you've, if you've got any advice on that please do drop a comment because I was really struggling to find good solid information about fuses I saw a lot of videos where people were just like Oh yeah, we've just got this inline fuse, we're just going to pop in here, and it's like, well, I've not seen anyone selling those, and I don't really understand them, and... Mm. Anyway, onto the actual install. I started by, sort of, figuring out where the hole was going to be for the, the, the cable entry gland, and I did this from the bottom up, because it was quite clear in the van where I wanted the hole to be, so I, kinda, I did some triangulating, some measuring, just to make sure that where that was going to be on the roof did make sense, and wasn't somewhere really dumb. And it turned out that it seemed fine, so I kind of I drilled holes upwards, like little holes. Kind of sketchy, I recommend your safety specs, which obviously I have by default, being a blind man. Yeah, there's, you know, you get some shards of metal and stuff, but I, I mean, it, that's not too intimidating, because I've at this point I drilled quite a few holes in the van. So, did the kind of pilots from underneath, and then went up and did the bigger holes on top. I sort of made them bigger than I needed to be because I'm just so used to needing to make the holes bigger than they used that they need to for everything else that I've done but actually in this case I didn't need to make them any bigger they could have just been the same the uh the standard size of the bit the eight mil bit but you know not really a big deal um I then filed them down with some files that I bought never expected to own any metalwork files after my experiences in in year seven at school of just filing the same piece of metal for six weeks straight but hey look you can really make yourself into anything including someone who owns some cheap metalworking files and that that, that did well um that that was it yeah did a good job even with my sort of lack of knowledge and haphazard technique and whatever um filed them down quite smooth uh painted them with some hammerite rust paint and then got on with starting to stick the solar panels down because the repainting for the Hammerite became a sort of limiting factor for the rest of the build. I think it's four hours or something for the repaint. So I took the panels up onto the roof two at a time. I sort of put them with their polystyrene foam kind of protector that came in the box in, put them back in the box. Just to keep it rigid while I took it on the roof, there was a bit of wind that was very intermittent just to kind of keep things high pressure and scary at random points. But you know, it's largely okay, slide it out, figure out where it's going to be, used a couple of things to kind of roughly mark out where the edges were, and then just applied quite a lot of the adhesive to the roof. Probably loads more than was necessary. And it occurred to me sort of after I'd done it that maybe I should be trying to make a seal in the middle, but I didn't for at least half of them. So I think it's probably okay that water can kind of get in and out. I don't know though. I mean... What's the worst that can happen? We'll, we'll just not go there, we'll, we'll gloss over that anyway. So yeah, I put the adhesive onto the roof and then smushed the panel onto the adhesive, got it into place. I, I feel like I actually got them pretty straight right off the bat and then put polystyrene for the two that I had polystyrene for or like some chair cushions from my mum's garden furniture on top and then just put some kind of reasonably not weighty weights on top like some books that were quite nice and wide because my understanding is while they're flexible they're still quite um, sort of brittle like 
if you go past the point of their flexibility or you put too much pressure on them, then they will crack and break quite easily. That's my understanding. So I was really paranoid. And there were a couple of times where I like very lightly pressed on them once they were stuck down just to like get it sorted. And I thought I maybe heard a crack. I really hope that it wasn't a crack. I haven't actually tested them yet. So this is maybe a slightly preemptive video, but this is how I stuck them on. And maybe I broke them in the process, but you shouldn't do that. Knowledge, learning. Yeah, I mean, I basically just rinsed and repeat that technique. Figure out where to put it, adhesive, stick it down, weights. It got harder progressively as I did the first two. The third one was probably the hardest because I just had much less space on the roof to just deal with everything at that point. And then the fourth one I actually did from a ladder because that sort of sat next to my fan. The other two are sort of width, the other three are width ways. Uh, across the middle section of the van, and then the last one had to kind of be squeezed on the end. I could theoretically fit another one on the other side, but as discussed, my my charge controller will not handle another panel. Otherwise, I'd totally do it. Like, I would be up for having more than 400 watts of solar. It's possible that I actually do need that for the amount of electricity that I'm going to be using, but I also expect to be driving a reasonable amount and not sort of hanging out in places for that long at a time whilst also using the van all day. But we'll find out. Um, that's something I'm looking forward to reporting back on, really. Yeah, sticking down the panels was was pretty straightforward and, you know, reasonably low stress. Obviously a bit scared the whole time, but it kind of went fine. The tricky thing was getting the cables secured down and getting the cable entry gland box to stick down. Because they're, they're like cables and conduit for, for everything else, but, but worse. They just really, really want to stay in the way that they were coiled up for however long they were hanging out after being manufactured and sent to you. Like, they're just so determined. I think the extra layer of insulation just adds so much more springy, springy, coily, coily. And, it, yeah, at first it just seemed like it really wasn't going to work. I was using butyl tape to stick them down and originally I'd actually planned to stick the solar panels down with the butyl, butyl tape having seen what the Exploration Brothers do which is their, their, their van build um, videos are, were really helpful at first because they do actually have a very similar van to mine but they don't go into quite as much detail as I maybe would like and yeah I don't know I bought this butyl, butyl tape but I was a little bit unsure about it and when I got it I just didn't feel like it was really sticky enough to trust and I'm really glad I didn't use it because it was really hard to get the, the plastic sticky paper the non-sticky paper off it it just seemed to want to stick to that more than anything else and it didn't seem to matter what I did it was just a nightmare to get it off that paper only one side of it the other side came off fine but obviously one side is enough so initially like the, you know, the butyl tape is really flexible so when you've got this cable that's really trying to be somewhere that is not where you're securing it down it just sort of stretches and bends and breaks the tape so at first it just it felt like it's gonna be a nightmare it felt like i was doing it but i was just gonna have to do it again really soon thankfully i sort of figured out that it works quite well if you double or triple or like quadruple it up so you get like a whole strip of it and then just fold and fold and fold so you get a really thick bit because i only got one mil thick butyl tape it was really thin but doing this it sticks really well to itself so you get like a really thick bit and then you can put a bunch of those and get something secured down and I think in the end it actually turned out okay it was a bit messy in terms of how it looked while you're up there and you can kind of see it from the ground which I didn't like I was hoping that all that stuff would just be out of sight out of mind but you know what it's actually not that bad and I I haven't gone up there and looked at it properly since like the day after I did it but I can see from my window that nothing is really that out of whack so I may go up and try and adjust it a little bit and I think a few places have, have slightly slipped but nothing disastrous has happened and honestly it's not as obvious from the ground as I first thought initially like when you're far away it just doesn't really look like anything because it's just these little black cables and black bits of sticky stuff I don't know you just can't really see it like in a, in a car park or something I don't know it just doesn't really look like anything and then close up you can kind of just see a few wires it's not really a big deal I might still try and tidy it up a little bit more the cable entry gland I stuck down again with the fix all turbo that stuff is just just becoming my my godsend I don't know if it's a problem I didn't use sealant but it is waterproof so I basically just put on a 
veritable boatload of it and you know like you would with silicon and stuck it down weighed it down with some books i used again a bit of pvc window trim that i used to kind of fill in the gaps because there's ribs all over the roof and it's kind of helpful to not just have to fill all that space up with adhesive so i stuck one of those down first and it i think it's all fine we've had a fair bit of rain and i did check around the holes and stuff i couldn't see any moisture so i think it's okay oh and the other thing on the cables themselves in the holes I put little rubber grommets to protect them because the the edges probably are still a bit sharp and like a bit of rubbing around like they're not going to be a hundred percent secured in in place like I've done my best to secure them so they don't move but they probably will move a little bit so that the rubber grommets will hopefully stop them from sort of wearing down over time fingers crossed anyway that's the idea I don't know if it's going to work there do we no See you in five years on that one, I guess. So yeah, it was a long day, but it was a good day. Only time will really tell how these turn out, and I will, of course, report back for your entertainment or information or infotainment or, you know, if you just want to laugh at me. Schadenfreude could also be that. The next episode is going to be about starting to insulate the walls. Like, you know, like sticking it actually in the walls and cutting the ply for lining the bed area. And I also make a big decision to readjust my plan with regards to my power station. But we'll save that for next time. Uh, YouTube obligatory, please like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, embrace with your loving arms, slash send a beautiful postcard from Madrid. And I'll sketch you, sketch you on the sketch guide scalers. Uh, I don't know. See you later, haters. Shame.